We're in Sweden for round 12 of the FIM World Motocross Championship at the Uddevalla circuit and we're down on the start line just ahead of MX2 qualifying. Let's have a word with our fastest man in time practice earlier who was Dylan Ferrandis if we can bother you for a second. Dylan obviously not having too many problems getting to grips with the track changes. Uh, today the track is really really difficult, uh, it's really hard. Uh, I don't understand why, the, why they don't rip, uh, rip the corner, so it's really difficult to, to find a good traction. But uh, I make a really good lap in a, in a, in a um, time practice, and I'm happy. I make uh, the pole positions. Now uh, I need to make a good start and, uh, and won the qualifying race for, for, be, for be good for tomorrow. And no problems with the change of direction in the track? Uh, no, no, I think the track is, uh, is better like this. Uh, it's, more, it's more fun for the, for the jump. Uh, I prefer me. And let's talk about the championship standings now because we're now well into the second half of the season. What's your goal? Uh, for me, my, my goal is always to be on the podium every weekend. So I'm, I'm still five and uh, my, my teammate is not here. So, so I think uh, for the point we, we're going to be close uh, after this weekend. For, so, so me, now I think the goal is to finish uh, on the top three overall and, uh, and I will, uh, will do, uh, do all for it. Best of luck this weekend, Dylan. We're going to carry on down. And obviously, that teammate he's mentioned is we're still missing Arno Tonus. Uh, but we'll carry on down and we'll have a word with Mel Pocock. We can just see him here because he did have a really good result in Germany. It was actually his best overall result of the season so far. Don't trip. Um, we're just talking about Germany. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Germany was pretty good. Um, took a bit of confidence from that race. Had two good starts and uh, managed to hang it out in the top 10. and. Uh, yeah, best result of the year. Um, here in Sweden, track's a bit slippery and uh, hope to do my best, uh, stay in one bit and have yeah, good starts again. Carry on. Thanks, Mel. Best of luck out there. Right, let's take a look at MX2 qualifying. A good crowd gathered here today at Udavala on Saturday for the qualifying races. Dylan Ferrandis on the CLS Kawasaki Monster on his machine was fastest in time training by three tenths of a second over the Red Bull KTM, half Jeffrey Hurlings and Geordie Tixier. Christophe Charlier, Yamaha Factory Racing was fourth with Tim Geiser in fifth. All eyes though would be on uh, the Scandinavians, the first of which Harry Kulas of Finland on the Sarkar Racing KTM. He was 15th in time training. 15 second board went up and the gate dropped and we are on board with Harry Kulas who pulled a flying start. Look how big that whole shot was as he rounded out this first turn. Much to the delight of the crowd up on the hills. Behind him there was all kinds of stuff going on but it was a clean track for the first few laps for Harry Kulas of Finland. Pulled a nice big whip over the first big tabletop as well. Clearly enjoying what was going on and enjoying being up the front for the first time in a long time. Started to pull clear of the 91 of Siwa, the 17 of Boutron and the two Rebel KTMs of Tixier and Hurlings. Hurlings in around fifth at that point, but wasn't long before he was past his teammate and onto the rear wheel of Boutron. Ferrandis and Fevre and Tonkov were next. Kulas though was on a mission, enjoying his time at the front through the chicane. Obviously the circuit in reverse direction this year, so that first turn where the old finish line used to be. Jeffrey Hurlings, only a matter of time before he would find his way onto the rear wheel and pass number 17, Boutron on the silver action KTM, but up front, Kulas on the 151 Sarkar Racing KTM was coming under the pressure from the 91 Rockstar Energy Suzuki of the uh, Swiss rider, Jeremy Siwa. As Hurlings found his way into third, and the two GoPros of Roma Fevre just running into the rear wheel of Guio and on board here with Dylan Ferrandis on the CLS Kawasaki Monster Energy Machine. A little bit further back, 23 Charlier, 26 of Luke Steig, Tim Geiser, 243, second overall at the last Grand Prix MX2 of Germany. Had a terrible start, was outside the top 20 and was starting to go to work on the riders ahead of him. Eventually came home in 10th, did the Slovenian rider. Jeffrey Hurlings got himself into second, found himself Closing down on the 151 of Harry Kulas. Looked to go up the inside. Thought he'd made the pass stick here as well, but just couldn't get the drive down. Had to go wide here. Kulas got drive. Hurlings off the track at that point. Kulas looks to his right, thinks he's got the line covered. And then, hey presto, Hurlings round the outside, almost loses the front end and goes over the bars, but manages to keep it upright. And at that point, Jeffrey Hurlings, lap three, was your new leader on the Red Bull KTM. Kulas though started to make a couple of mistakes. 
Siwa was closing in, and it wasn't long before he was through into second position as Jeffrey Hurlings started to pull clear of the rest of the field. At this point then, 461, Fevre on board here, and Ferrandis, the two French riders, going at it, squaring up to each other. Ferrandis eventually going through into third place behind Jordi Tixier, 911. So second, third, fourth, and fifth, consisting of Jordi Tixier, Rebel KTM, Dylan Ferrandis, CLS Kawasaki Monster Energy Machine, Roman Fevre, Wilvo Nastar, Husqvarna Factory, and Jeremy Siwa, who found a way past Kulas with Guio just hanging on there in the background. Those guys fighting over sixth place. Hurlings mastering the hard, slick conditions here at Udavala. Obviously renowned for his sand prowess, but Tixier feeling the heat in the closing stage of the race as Dylan Ferrandis and Roman Fevre keeping him more than honest as they battled over second position. This is how close it was between Tixier and Ferrandis as they started to break free of the 461, Roman Fevre. David Guaneri looked on. Watch this here from uh, Hurlings, just doubling his way into some of those braking bumps. That's where his technique works for him. Likewise, his teammate, Jordi Tixier, not able to carry that same smooth technique on the same part of the racetrack. Guio and Kulas battling out in the closing stages, but Harry Kulas would eventually hold on for that sixth place ahead of Guio in seventh. But Jeffrey Hurlings came over the line to take the win in the qualifying race from Tixier, Ferrandis, Fevre and Siwa. Jeffrey, tomorrow you'll start off your seventh pole position of this season. Are you happy with how things went? Yeah, you know, it was, was good. Um, started off pretty slowly. Uh, you know, the start wasn't the best, but I worked my way up to the front. And I think after about 10 minutes, I was in the lead and I uh, just wrote my own pace and uh, won the seventh uh, qualification race of this, this season. So I'm uh, really pumped for that. So hope to have two good starts tomorrow. Hope the weather stays dry and uh, have a good day tomorrow. Thank you, Jeffrey. We'll see you tomorrow.